good about the upcoming season? Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. Well, I guess I do sometimes wonder what the heck I'm still doing here. So let's talk a bit about where Ted is emotionally at the start of season three. This is the first time we really see him question what he's still doing in Richmond. Can you speak to that doubt and how it might influence some of Ted's decisions this year? I love the Tonys for a number of reasons. The award show, you know, because I love theater. I love Broadway. I was lucky to grow up with a mom who took me and my sisters to go see stuff all the time. One of my other favorite things about the Tonys are the live performances. Third favorite thing is how often people get up there, men and women, fathers and mothers, and thank their kids for being okay with mom and dad leaving to go make their, you know, 630 call time. You know, that's usually when most parents get home from work and they thank their children for giving them the opportunity to do something that they truly, truly love and for their understanding and patience of it. I think Ted is going through that experience. I think he is thankful to his son and it happens in the, in the very first episode of like, I wouldn't be away from you if it wasn't for something important. And do you understand why I'm still here? Of course, to win the whole thing. And that's a very like understandable perspective for a child to have because we put so much emphasis on winning, on A pluses, on being thin, on whatever the ideal is, right? And yet the son then comes back and says, when Ted says, it's not about winning and losing, they says, yeah, but you gotta try, dad. No, you're absolutely right. We always have to try. If that's if that's what your son or daughter or, or you know, your niece or nephew or your next door neighbor who, you know, mows your lawn, whatever, like gets from you is like, they, they see you getting up every day and trying, even if you get knocked down, like then Chumbawamba was onto something. Now let's talk about Nate a bit. In the premiere, we see that Ted is reluctant to speak poorly of him. I also couldn't help but notice that Ted still has that photo that Nate gave him last Christmas on his bedroom dresser. This show has taught us above all else that it's the hope that'll kill you. But is there some hope on Ted's part that Nate can be redeemed, that the old Nate isn't too far gone? Yeah, I think Ted is, you know, cautiously optimistic. I, and I don't even know if cautiously is the right adverb. You know, he's. I think he's just, inherently optimistic. And maybe that was something he auditioned in his body, you know, for many, many years after the different things he had to deal with, but it's become part of his DNA now. I think like anyone, he gives, he allows people space to grow or die. And I mean that metaphorically, of course, but like, I don't think Ted's mad. As mad at Nate as, you know, uh, you know other people at Richmond. Right. Certainly people that are fans of this show, <laughs> you know, I don't think I don't think Ted is all that angry because what Nate did, at least in the regards to the betrayal of sharing, you know, his panic attack was relieve that burden of of the secret of the shame, you know, that and made Ted deal with it. Much like, you know, you know, the way Ted felt about Rebecca hiring him to fail in season one, it helped change his life. It gave him perspective, whether Ted's hope will kill him or, you know, or, or, uh, I'm not saying Nate's going to kill him, but you never know. Tune in. Uh, you know, <laughs> but I think it is something that, that he would hope not for Ted, obviously, uh, but for mm -hmm. Nate himself. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. In the premiere, we see Nate suffer a panic attack during his first press conference as head coach. Do you think there's a part of him that relates to Ted in that moment? You know, he's sort of going through the same thing he called Ted out for in the press. Uh, yes, I think a, a little bit. I think the audience are led to sort of draw that parallel themselves if they choose to. I mean, whether Nate recognizes that himself, whether it kind of allows him to sort of, I guess, sort of sympathize and empathize with what um, Ted is sort of going through when he goes through a panic attack, um, I don't know. But, um, uh, but yeah, there is certainly, uh, a parallel there, and um, you know, Nate is is clearly struggling in in his in his new role um, right from the off. Don't throw stones, you know, in a, in a glass house, you know, like e until you walk in someone's shoes. I imagine that Nate, knowing that these type of things happen, and he's probably had panic attacks and didn't realize what they were. I think Nate had a small panic attack when Roy, you know, came back in the last episode, you know, last season and, and, you know, and came back as a coach, whether he realized it or not. And so it does, it does create empathy when you go through something that you feel like, you know, someone else had it so easy. It's like, well, then, you know, you try it. I had those, those moments of, of, of judging, you know, Saturday Night Live before I was on it as like some like know-it-all, you know, young 20 year old who's doing comedy in Chicago. And then the second you're there, you're kind of like, this is hard as hell. You know, mm -hmm. like who, who am I, who am I to judge? 
And so, yeah, I, I think Nate is probably going through an element of that this season for sure. Everyone is laughing at us. And I am begging you, please, fight back. Now, Rebecca's trauma stemming from her marriage to Rupert influences how she speaks to Ted in the premiere and what she expects of him this season. What sort of impact, if any, is that going to have on Ted and Rebecca's friendship? Sometimes it's easy to move on when that person isn't in your face all the time. But are you really moving on from it? And so like this season, now Rupert is right there, is an adversary, not just from a team perspective, but also what she wants from her own team. And here's Ted as this character who proudly, if not even brazenly, said in the third episode of season one, that winning and losing doesn't matter. She's kind of like, oh, no, it does. And just as much as Henry is saying, hey, you're gonna win the whole thing, you know? And does that make Ted and Rebecca's relationship adversarial? Or does it just show two sides of a similar coin in our relationship with winning and losing? And 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 who you do it for and for what reason, uh, I, I think can bring about uh, a certain level of conflict between two characters that clearly have an affinity and an affection and were, you know, you know, <laughs> in my opinion, divinely, you know, brought together.